Friends, it's a good time to summarize what we have learnt in the last couple of lectures. So, we are looking at the fluid solid heterogeneous non-catalytic heterogeneous reactions and then we identified two possible cases, two possible modes. One is a situation where the particle which is actually participating in the reaction, it does not shrink with uh, as the reaction progresses. And then another situation where the particle which participates in the reaction actually shrinks in size as the reaction progresses. And then we looked at two possible models, progressive conversion model and the shrinking core model. And it was observed that the shrinking core model is more common in uh, most of these situations. And so, we de developed a model for uh, the shrinking core model for both the particle size uh, unchanging particle size and also for those particles which were shrinking in size. And that for uh, situations where if the overall uh, reaction overall conversion is actually controlled by uh, different uh, rate controlling steps. For example, the diffusion of gas phase from the bulk through the gas film to the surface of the uh, core or the diffusion of the species through the ash layer or it is the reaction controlling. So, the expressions that we get for the uh, time that is taken for the unreacted core to reach a certain size, which is directly correlated with the conversion of the uh, solid species can be summarized uh, as below. So, for spherical particles, so it can be summarized in this table here. So, if for a spherical particle, suppose we uh, take the constant size. and uh, varying or changing size, these are two possible modes. Here changing size refers to the special case of no ash layer present. As noted in the earlier lecture, the size can change even if the ash layer is present if the densities of solid product and the reactant are different. Now, suppose if it is gas film diffusion control. If the overall, overall reaction is controlled by the film diffusion control, then we found that T by tau, where t, t is the time taken for the unreacted core to reach a certain radius because of the heterogeneous reaction that should be equal to uh, the conversion of the uh, solid itself, which is directly related to the uh, amount of uh, solid that is reacted. And then in changing size, the same exp uh, the expression for the same would be T by tau is 1 by 1 minus 1 minus x p to the power of 2 by 3. Here tau is the time taken for the uh, complete conversion that is uh, all of the solids which is present in the core is has gone for complete reaction. Now, next uh, next possibility is ash layer control ash layer ash layer diffusion control. So, if ash layer diffusion is actually controlling the overall conversion, in that case T by tau is given by 1 minus 3 into 1 minus x p to the power of 2 by 3 plus 2 into 1 minus x p. So, that is the expression for T by tau and of course, in changing size the ash layer does not exist and therefore, it does not offer any resistance to the overall conversion. Then the third case is where the reaction is controlling the overall conversion. It's the, if the, it's the reaction control, then T by tau is given by 1 minus 1 minus x b to the power of 1 by 3, and here T by tau is given by 1 minus 1 minus x b to the power of 1 by 3. In both cases, the the time taken for the unreacted core to reach a certain radius depends on the conversion in exactly the same way because the presence or absence of the film or the ash layer does not contribute uh, to the overall conversion if it is in the reaction control regime. Now, all this we look for spherical particles. What happens here? Uh, what happens if it is other geometries? For example, if there is plating of metals, then uh, normally it is not plated on a spherical particle, it is plated on other kinds of geometries. It could be a, a cylindrical geometry, or it could be a flat plate geometry, or it could be any other curvature. So, so let us look at two specific other geometries which are fairly common. One is the flat plate. Suppose if it is a flat plate 
and where the solid is now present in the flat plate and there is a fluid which is now coming on to the surface of the flat plate and the heterogeneous reaction is occurring at the surface of the flat plate. So, in that case if we consider the constant particle size, if we consider the case of constant particle size then uh, if the for a flat plate one can actually define one can define conversion as 1 minus 1 by L, where L is essentially the half thickness, L is the half thickness of the plate that is actually being used for uh, used as a, a solid reactant. And if the if it is a film diffusion controlling, if it is a film diffusion controlling as regime. In that case T by tau is given by X p, where tau is given by tau is the time taken for the total conversion that is for all the solids to uh, undergo reaction that will be given by density of the particle divided in, into the half thickness length scale into ma divided by mass transport coefficient into concentration of the species in the gas phase. If it is ash layer diffusion control. If it is ash layer diffusion control then T by tau is essentially given by x b square uh, where tau is given by rho b l square divided by 2 diffusivity into concentration of the species in the gas phase. And if it is reaction controlled if it is reaction control then T by tau is simply given by x b and tau is given by rho b l divided by k double prime which is the intrinsic rate constant multiplied by C A G. In intrinsic k, k double prime is the intrinsic specific rate and uh, C A G is the corresponding gas phase concentration. Now, similar expressions have been obtained, obtained for cylinder geometry and they are as follows in this table. So, for cylinder for a cylindrical geometry the x p conversion of the solid is defined as 1 minus r by r naught the whole square. Now, here r naught is the initial radius of the core, r naught is the initial radius, initial radius of the uh, cylinder and r is the instantaneous radius. instantaneous radius of the cylinder. So, if with this definition if the if, if it is gas phase diffusion control gas film if it is gas film diffusion control then T by tau is essentially given as x b and tau is equal to rho b into r naught which is the initial radius uh, divided by 2 times k g into C a g. So, that is the time taken by the uh, core for complete conversion and if it is ash layer diffusion control, if it is ash layer diffusion control then T by tau is given by x p plus 1 minus x b multiplied by the natural logarithm of 1 minus x p where tau is tau b tau is the to time for total conversion that is given by rho b into r naught square divided by 4 d e into C a g. So, that is the concentration of the species at the gas phase and if it is reaction controlled, if it is reaction controlled then T by tau is essentially given by 1 minus 1 minus x b to the power of half uh, tau is equal to rho b into r naught divided by k double prime that is the specific reaction rate multiplied by C a g. So, this sort of summarizes the various uh, uh, time taken for uh, for the core to reach a certain radius uh, if, if the overall reaction is controlled by different uh, resistances which is actually available in the system. So, all these are for basically constant uh, constant size system. And similar expressions can actually be worked out for uh, varying size as well. We so far looked at uh, the cases where the 
uh, overall reaction is actually controlled by the resistance of one of these three uh, resistances which are available that is either the diffusion through the gas film or the diffusion through the ash layer in the case of uh, uh, constant particle size uh, or uh, if it is a reaction controlled. So, the, the rea the in, in reality this is not the situation in reality what happens is that all three resistances actually contribute. So, as reaction proceeds and in fact that is true because as reaction proceeds as reaction proceeds e even in the constant size case. even the constant size case what what is observed is that the uh, of course the unreacted cores uh, core radius is going to decrease unreacted core radius decreases as the reaction proceeds and therefore as a result the relative importance of various resistances is going to change. So, that is very important because the, there are three resistances as the size of the unreacted core changes then the relative importance of these different resistances towards their uh, effect on the overall conversion also is going to change. So, which means that not one so, no one resistance controls overall conversion all times. All time t. So, therefore, it is important to con simultaneous consider simultaneous action of all the resistances. So, it is important to consider simultaneous action of all three resistances. So, if you want to incorporate all three resistances, then the uh, then the model for the radius of the unreacted core uh, as a function of time that uh, the differential equation which basically tells what is the rate of change relates the rate of change of the radius of unreacted core with respect to time to all the other properties and concentrations of the system can actually be rewritten by using using a combination of all the resistances and the rewritten model will be dr by dt that will be equal to minus cag divided by rho b C A G is the gas phase concentration, rho b is the density of the uh, solid that is used divided by r square by r naught square into k g plus r naught minus r divided by the diffusivity into r by r naught plus 1 by k double prime that is the specific reaction rate. Now, here it is assumed that the volume fraction of the solid in the unreacted core is approximately equal to 1 and, and, uh, and so there are three terms here which correspond to three different uh, resistances. So, the first one here this corresponds to the gas film this corresponds to the gas film resistance and this corresponds to the ash, ash layer. this corresponds to the diffusion in ash layer and the last term corresponds to the reaction resistance. Resistance due to the heterogeneous reaction that is occurring in the on the surface of the unreacted core. So, now suppose this is for a, a constant size system. So, if the particle size does not change this is for the constant size system. Suppose if the if we can the same thing can be written for a, a, a shrinking core a shrinking size type of uh, particles where there is no ash layer. So, if there is no ash layer then the resistance due to ash layer does not exist. So, simply we can obtain the expression by removing the resistance due to the ash layer which is present in this expression here. So, for shrinking particles there is no ash layer. So, therefore, we can write this expression as dr by dt is minus 
सी ए जी बाय रो बी डिवाइडेड बाय वन बाय के जी प्लस वन बाय के डबल प्राइम वेर के डबल प्राइम इज दी स्पेसिफिक रेट एंड के जी इज द करस्पॉन्डिंग मास ट्रांसपोर्ट को एफिशियंट सो ना लेट अस टेक एन एग्जाम्पल प्रॉब्लम एंड सी हाउ वी कैन प्रिडिक द डिजोल्यूशन ऑफ अ पार्टिकल ऑफ अ सर्टन टाइप विच इज अंडर गोइंग सच काइंड ऑफ अ फ्लूड सॉलिड नॉन कैटालिटिक हेड्रोजीनियस रिएक्शन एन एक्सलेंट एग्जाम्पल ऑफ दैट इज दी इज द ड्रग्स विच आर एक्चुअली बींग एडमिनिस्टर्ड सो द सॉलिड ड्रग्स विच आर एडमिनिस्टर्ड फॉर क्यूरिंग अ सर्टन डिजीज दे वेन दे गो इन टू दी Uh, into the body they have to dissolve and uh, it's important to understand how much time does it take for the uh, for the drug uh, which is a solid particle to dissolve and that uh, the dosage of the drug actually strongly depends on on the time taken for complete dissolution so therefore it's important to model this from the pharmacokinetic standpoint of view so let us look at this problem so dissolution of solid particles suppose if we assume that there are all these drugs which are given inside they are all mono dispersed particles that is all the particles that are actually in the drug are of same size this is not true always but let us assume to start with that all particles are actually same size that is it's a mono dispersed system and then so this is so we need to the objective is to find out what is the dissolution time which actually plays an important role in the pharmacokinetics now suppose if there is a species a which is basically in the fluid stream that reacts with certain solid which is essentially the drug particle and that leads to formation of products now <clears throat> if we assume that the uh, fluid a actually reacts with the core which is which contains the solid material and if you assume that it's first order with respect to the fluid the reaction rate is first order with respect to fluid and zero order with respect to the solids which is present then the qu question is what is the dissolution time so we need to estimate the the objective of the problem is to find the dis dissolution time the time that is taken for dissolution of these particles so now we can observe we can uh, we can actually observe that the rate of mass transport the rate of mass transfer to the surface is actually equal to the rate of surface reaction why is this because the the particles are expected expected to as a, the the property of the drugs are always such that the particles are expected to dissolve and so the the particles are the this is actually a process where the particles are actually shrinking in size so there is no ash layer which is actually present so therefore the rate of mass transfer to the surface should be equal to the rate at which it is being consumed for the surface reaction so therefore we can write that war if that's the flux at which the species is actually traveling from the bulk gas uh, gas phase to the surface of the uh, solid that's equal to kg into ca minus cas where ca is the bulk concentration and ca is the surface of uh, surface concentration and that should be equal to the uh, reaction rate ra double prime and that's equal to if kr is the specific reaction constant multiplied by cas so that's the surface concentration and this is the net reaction rate so this is the reaction rate and this is the mass transport this corresponds to the mass transport so from here we can actually eliminate cas so not that cas is a quantity which cannot be actually measured experimentally but ca is the bulk concentration and that can actually be measured so we need to eliminate cas which is not a measurable property measurable quantity so kg into ca divided by kg plus kr so plugging in this back into the expression for war we find that double prime that's equal to kr into kg ca divided by kr and that's equal to ca by 1 by kg plus 1 by kr 
So therefore, if we know the mass transport coefficient and the and the reaction in a specific reaction constant uh, reaction rate, then we will be able to actually calculate uh, the required uh, quantities such as the dissolution time. So, therefore, now there is a need to find out what is this mass transport coefficient. So, we can use correlations in order to find the mass transport uh, mass transport coefficient k g. So, suppose if we assume that the particles are small. So, under small d p and if there is no shear stress at the. So, if there is no shear stress at the boundary of the fluid and the solid, then we can actually uh, using the Froessling correlation, we can find out that from Froessling co correlation, we can find out that Sherwood number which is equal to the mass transport coefficient into diameter of the particle divided by the corresponding fusivity that is approximately equal to 2. So, from here we can find out that the mass transport coefficient is given by 2 times diffusivity divided by the corresponding particle uh, diameter of the uh, particle which is actually being dissolved. So, plugging in the back into the uh, expression for flux we find that W A R equal to K R into C A 1 plus K R by K G and that is equal to K R into C A divided by 1 plus K R into D P divided by 2 times D E and which this can be rewritten as K R into C A divided by 1 plus D P by D star. So, where D star is nothing but the ratio of 2 times D E into K R. So, that is what is D star. So, d star oh, the meaning of d star is that it basically tells you the diameter at which the mass transport and the reaction rates are actually equal. So, if we look at what is the expression for uh, d star, d star is 2 times d e divided by k r and that is the that is essentially the diameter at which the mass transport rate and the reaction rate are equal. Reaction rates are equal. So, therefore, if if the uh, diameter of the particle, if this is larger than d star, then it can be expected that it is mass transport controlling. While if the particle diameter is less than d star, then it is actually expected to be a, a reaction controlling scheme. The overall conversion is expected to be reaction controlling. So, now in order to find the radius of the particle as a function of time, we can now write a mole balance on the solid particle and the, the mole balance goes as here. mole balance on solid particle. So, where whatever rate at which things are coming inside minus whatever rate at which the particles are leaving out plus generation should be equal to accumulation that is the balance. Now, nothing is coming inside because it is the solid which is actually participating. So, there is no flow. So, nothing is coming inside and nothing is actually leaving, but but some of it is actually being reacted. So, that is accounted the generation term. So, if R b s is the rate at which the solid is being consumed at the surface of the particle multiplied by pi into d p square that is the uh, surface area of the uh, of the of the uh, solid particle and that should be equal to d by d t into density into volume of the spherical particle. So, suppose if we assume equimolar counter diffusion, suppose if we assume equimolar counter diffusion, then the minus R A S double prime that is the rate at which the species A is actually being consumed because of the uh, heterogeneous reaction that should be equal to minus R B S the rate at which the solid is being consumed. This is because of the equimolar counter diffusion and the stoichiometry which is associated with the particular reaction. So, now this equation can further be simplified as rho into 
3 pi by 6 into d p square into that is equal to r a s into pi into d p square. So, this can be simplified as d by d t of d p that is equal to minus 2 minus r a s double prime divided by rho. So, that is the expression for the rate of change of the diameter of the drug particle as a function of time and how is it related to the surface reaction rate and the density of the particle. So, now this can actually be we know the what is the rate. So, that can be rewritten as minus 2 into k r into c a divided by rho into 1 by 1 plus d p by d star and this can be rewritten as minus alpha divided by 1 plus d p by d star. So, that is the expression for rate of change of the diameter of the particle as a function of time. So, if you assume that this whole thing is a constant like alpha, so we can rewrite this expression as d, d by d t of d t equal to minus alpha by 1 plus d p by d star, where alpha captures the rate of the reaction divided by the density of the per corresponding particle. So, now we can integrate this with the following initial condition that at time t equal to 0, the initial size of the particle was d p o and based on this initial condition the equation can be integrated and integrated expression would be d p o minus d p plus 1 by d star 1 by 2 d star into d p o square minus d p square that should be equal to alpha t. So, this provides a relationship between the properties of the of the system and the diameter of the particle and time. Now, in order to obtain a complete conversion for this problem for for, for attaining achieving complete conversion that is for complete dissolution of the drug. So, for complete dissolution of the drug. the d p should be equal to 0 that is all the par particles are actually completely consumed and so at and the time tau which is the time taken for complete conversion is given by 1 by alpha into d p o plus d p o by 2 d star square. So, that is the relationship between the time taken for complete conversion and the uh, diameter of the particle and other properties of the system. So, now this is the express this is for uh, mono dispersed particles, but normally the drugs which are actually administrated they are all poly dispersed that is particles are actually of different sizes. There is a population of particles and each of these particles can actually be of different sizes and all of them are actually simultaneously undergoing dissolution leading to the uh, shrinking of the particles. Now, the only issue here is that different particles will actually do different things because the size is different. Although the reaction is same, their, uh, their dissolution rates are expected to be different because their sizes are completely different. So, let us look at dissolution of, let us see how to capture this behavior. dissolution of poly dispersed particles. So, what is poly dispersed particles? Suppose you have collection of particles which are of different sizes. For example, the this big one could be of size d 1, it could be d 2, maybe it could be d 3 and this could be d 4 and so on and so forth. So, there will be a collection of particles and each of these are different in size and so there are particles of different sizes. Now, not just that the initial uh, stage that the, the particles will be of different size, uh, there will be a distribution of sizes of particles all through the time when the dissolution is actually occurring. So, therefore, clearly there is a, a distribution, there is a, a size distribution and the question is to find out what is the dissolution time. The objective is to find the 
dissolution time. And in order to find the dissolution time for, for particles who are actually placed in a certain distribution, uh, one, which one needs to actually follow the distribution dynamics. So, the distribution dynamics have to be followed. So, so let us look at what is a distribution. So, suppose if I look at look at the plane of number of particles versus the fraction of the number of particles that are actually of a particular size. So, then we expect that it is a certain histogram where the location between let us say d p and d p plus delta d p which is a, a small increase in the particle uh, uh, small difference in the particle size. So, in that case the area un under the curve in this location it signifies the number of particles which are actually present in the system whose diameter is between these two numbers. So, therefore, f d p multiplied by delta d p that is basically the number of particles between d p and d p plus delta d p. So, that is the number of particles and moreover if we integrate this expression from 0 to infinity f d p into d p into the differential of diameter of the particle that should be equal to n naught which is the total that is the total initial particles which are actually present. Now, if we assume that it follows a log normal distribution, let us assume that the initial uh, distribution of the particles they follow a, a log normal distribution. Let us assume that they follow log normal distribution. So, now the fraction of the species as fraction of the particles whose size is d p at time t equal to 0 and that normalized by n naught is actually given by 1 by d p square root of 2 pi into ln of sigma 2 multiplied by exponential of minus ln of d p by d g and square of that divided by 2 times ln sigma 2 square. So, that is the expression for the log normal distribution where d g and sigma 2 are essentially the distribution parameters. These are the distribution parameters. So, now the question is in order to find out what is the dissolution time of the particles which are actually in this polydispersed system is to actually find out what is the how the distribution itself changes. Instead of monitoring every uh, drug particle, it is better to monitor simply the population itself. So, the question is how does the how does distribution change. So, that is what we are going to look at. Now, suppose if we look at the distribution, at any time and if it is some general curve like this. Now, we can write a simple balance on the population of uh, these drug particles and suppose if we take a small element between d p and d p plus delta d p. So, therefore, the uh, thickness of this element is delta d p if we assume the thickness is delta d p and by, by definition of this histogram the integral of 0 to infinity f of d p comma t into the d d p should be equal to n naught that should be the uh, na total number of particles that were actually initially present and because there are no new particles are added it is only the particles actually dissolve and disappear. So, therefore, the uh, integral under the curve up to infinity if we assume that 
the particles are actually of some finite size at all times, then uh, the, that should be equal to the total number of particles itself. Now, if that is not the case, then this should be a then this should be a function of time. So, the number of particles will change because some of these particles will dissolve and disappear and when that happens then this uh, integral between 0 to infinity should actually be a function of time. Now, one other quantity which is required in order to model the system is the growth rate. Suppose, R d p is the growth rate of uh, uh, every, uh, every particle and of course, it's, uh, it depends upon the size of the particle itself. So, that is the growth rate. Growth rate of particle whose diameter is d p, then one can actually write a population balance equations. In order to capture the uh, dynamics of the whole distribution itself as the reaction actually proceeds. So, the, uh, the population balance equation can be uh, written as the balance between the number of uh, particles which are actually growing and uh, reaching the diameter whose size is between d p and delta d p. And also, we need to account for the particles which are already present in this small element d p and delta d p and they grow and they actually become bigger than d p plus delta d p. So, which means they leave this small element delta d p and there is no uh, there is no addition of new particles because the once the drug is being fed it is just being dissolved and so there is no other mechanism by which the uh, particles are actually being added into that small element delta d p. And then the other term is the accumulation term. So, therefore, putting them all together, it will be number of particles growing into region between d p and d p plus delta d p minus the number of particles growing out of region between d p and d p plus delta d p that should be equal to the accumulation of uh, particles in in delta d p in that small element. Now, suppose if r is the growth rate which is what we have defined uh, a short while ago, then the number of particles growing into the region between d p and uh, d p plus delta d p is actually given by r into d p. So, that is the growth rate when the particle is right uh, whose size is exactly d p and then that multiplied by the corresponding fraction will tell will provide a clue as to what is the number of uh, particles that are actually growing into the region in this uh, small interval of diameter and that evaluated at d p minus delta d p and that should be equal to d by d t. So, that is the accumulation of the particles in delta d p equal to f of d p comma t multiplied by delta d p. So, that is the rate of change that is the rate of at which the particles are actually being accumulated in that small element. So, now rearranging this equation and setting delta d p equal to 0. So, set delta d p to be 0 then it can be written as minus d by d of the particle diameter into f of d p comma t that should be equal to do f by do t comma t. So, that is the expression for the popul that is the population balance. So, now what do we do with this population balance? So, we can solve this equation in order to find the uh, radius of the particle, uh, in order to find the how the distribution uh, the radi radius distribution uh, actually changes. So, now this can actually be rewritten as d f by d t plus r into d f by d t p plus 
f into dr by d dp that is equal to 0. So, now where r dp is essentially the growth rate of the particle of size dp and if suppose in the earlier case if the, if the particles were mono dispersed we actually found out what is the growth rate. So, therefore, for every particle of a certain size that expression can be used to, uh, to used as a, a growth rate of the particle of that particular size. So, therefore, from here it will be d d p by d t t that should be equal to minus alpha by 1 plus d p by d star. So, that is the rate at which the mono dispersed particles are actually uh, growing. So, plugging that into the expression uh, plugging that into the population balance we will find that. So, this is for the mono dispersed case. So, plugging that into the expression we will find that the that the, the, the rate of r d p that is equal to equal to minus alpha by 1 plus d p by d star. And so, the population balance will be d f by d t plus minus alpha by 1 plus d p by d star into d f by d d p plus f into alpha by d star into 1 by 1 plus d p by uh, d star the whole square that is equal to 0. So, that is the expression for the that is the population balance that actually captures how the dynamics of this distribution actually changes with time. How the, how the distribution changes with time. So, now if we introduce a few dimensionless quantities which is actually useful in solving this problem. So, psi equal to f into d star divided by n naught where f is the uh, distribution of the uh, particles based on the size and d star is the ratio of the it is the diameter when the mass transport rate and the reaction rate are equal to each other and n naught is the initial total number of particles. Then epsilon is defined as 1 minus 1 plus d p by d star and theta is defined as alpha into t by d star. So, now if we introduce these dimensionless quantities we can rewrite the population balance as d psi by d theta that is minus 1 by epsilon into d psi by d epsilon minus uh, uh, that is equal to uh, minus psi by epsilon square. So, that is the expression. So, this equation is actually of a very very familiar uh, differential equation form uh, it is of the form p of x comma y into d z by d x plus q of x comma y into d z by d y that is equal to r of x comma y comma z. So, from here we can see that if if p of p of x comma y is nothing but 1 and q of x comma y is like 1 by epsilon and the r of x comma y is like psi by minus epsilon square. So, the way to solve this equation is basically to use the method of characteristics. is to use the method of characteristics where it is the, this problem is posed in a slightly different way. So, d x by p sorry d theta by 1 is equal to d epsilon by minus 1 by epsilon and that should be equal to d psi by minus psi by epsilon square. So, that is the way in which the uh, population balance equation which is actually here written here can actually be posed in terms of the method of characteristics. So, now the first two terms in the uh, uh, in the repose problem basically it looks like d theta by 1 is equal to minus epsilon into d epsilon. So, from here we can find out that epsilon square plus 2 theta is equal to a constant c 1 and that should be of the form 
of the form h of epsilon square plus 2 theta. So, that should be the functional form, functional dependence of this particular expression. And then next let us look at the other case d epsilon by 1 by epsilon that should be equal to d psi by one, uh, psi by epsilon square. So, this can actually be rewritten as d epsilon by epsilon is equal to d psi by psi, which can be solved to obtain ln epsilon equal to ln psi and that is equal to some constant k. So, that is a constant. So, from here we can find that psi by epsilon is nothing but some constant c 2 and that can be equal to h of epsilon square plus 2 theta. So, that is the functional dependence. So, next we can actually see how to take this forward and find the uh, distribution profiles. So, suppose if we we can rewrite the relationship between the psi and epsilon as psi equal to square root of epsilon square into h of epsilon square plus 2 theta. So, in order to obtain the final distribution which is actually uh, present in the definition of psi. So, psi is almost like a, a non-dimensional distribution of the uh, various size uh, of the uh, particles which are of different sizes. So, if you look at the initial distribution. initial distribution which is actually given by log normal distribution. So, the log normal distribution is as go as it goes here. Root 2 pi into ln sigma 2 into exponential of minus ln d p by d star d p by d g the whole square divided by 2 ln sigma 2 and square of that. So, that is the initial distribution. Now, if you know the initial distributions, then we can actually introduce the uh, transformed, transformed variables. So, basically we introduce epsilon psi and theta into this uh, initial distribution and, and if you assume that uh, if we so if we assume that epsilon equal to 1 plus d p by d star. So, this comes from the non dimensional form of epsilon and then from here the we can get that d p is equal to d star into epsilon minus 1. Actually, this is the non dimensional form of epsilon and from here we can find out the relationship bet between d p and the other parameters. So, if we assume that uh, d r if we assume a new variable d r. is equal to d g divided by d star where d g is some parameter of the distribution and d star is the diameter at which the mass transfer rate and the reaction rates are equal. Then we can find out that psi is equal to some f of epsilon comma theta divided by n naught into d star that should be equal to square root of epsilon square into h of epsilon square plus 2 theta. So, that is the functional form of the uh, this variable psi. So, now in we, if we want to find out what is the final distribution, we need to find this expression f of epsilon comma theta. This expression needs to be found in order to find out what is the instantaneous distribution of the sizes. So, how can we do this? So, it can be done by actually using the using the uh, distribution at the initial con initial uh, uh, distribution at the initial state where the reaction has not started then f of epsilon comma theta so this can be obtained by simply replacing epsilon square with plus 2 theta in f of epsilon comma 0 so note that this is the initial distribution and the final distribution can simply be obtained by replacing epsilon square in this uh, initial distribution with epsilon square plus 2 theta. So, that serves as the solution methodology. So, now we can rewrite this as psi, psi of epsilon comma theta. 
so that's equal to f of epsilon comma theta. So, you can introduce we can now uh, use the initial distribution in order to find out what is the value of psi what is the expression for psi as a function of epsilon and theta and that would be equal to epsilon divided by square root of 2 pi into ln sigma 2 into 1 by square root of epsilon square plus 2 theta into 1 by square root of epsilon square plus 2 theta minus 1 multiplied by exponential of minus ln of square root of epsilon square plus 2 theta minus 1 by dr and square of that divided by 2 into ln sigma 2 to the power of square of that. So, that is the uh, distribution at any time in the non-dimensional form. So, once we know this uh, distribution, uh, we can look at the uh, distribution profiles as a function of uh, time. So, suppose if this is d p the particle diameter and this is f of uh, d p comma time, then if suppose this is the initial distribution. So, that is time t equal to 0 that is the initial distribution. Then as time progresses all the particles are actually undergoing the uh, undergoing the dissolution because of the heterogeneous reaction. And so, as time goes by the distribution changes and so this is t 1 which is greater than 0 and then as time further goes by more uh, more dissolution will happen and so this will be uh, t 2 which will be greater than t 1 and then further time uh, further time elapses and then the distribution will be this will be t 3 which is greater than t 2 and then eventually when the uh, conversion is going to be almost complete then the distribution will look, look like this where this is t 4 which is greater than t 3. So, that is the kind of distribution that one can actually obtain as a function of time for this uh, poly dispersed uh, particles which are undergoing uh, dissolution. So, let us summarize what we have learnt in the last three lectures. So, we have looked at the fluid solid uh, uh, non catalytic heterogeneous reactions and this can occur through two modes one is where the particle size does not change another one is uh, the case where the particle size actually changes as the reaction progresses and there are three different possible uh, resistances which are actually existing in this kind of a system one is the gas film gas film resistance for uh, diffu diffusion resistance and the other one is the ash layer diffusion resistance and the third one is the reaction uh, reaction controlling resistance offered because of the surface reaction. So, these three uh, uh, under these three regimes the uh, time that is taken for the unreactive time that is taken by the particle to reach a certain radius uh, has been uh, modeled and calculated and uh, that for uh, different uh, geometries have been looked into for both the uh, shrinking or the changing size particle case and for the constant size particle case. And then we looked at an example of uh, dissolution of monodispersed particles and extended for a polydispersed system. Thank you.